Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to CIESF Technical Seminar. Um, we are Chinese Institute of Engineers, San Francisco Bay Area chapter. Today is our technical seminar um, on the artificial intelligence topic. Um, first of all, my name is Yan Shu. I'm the host today. Uh, we have the honor to have speaker Qin Jing, a, a PhD student from Northeastern University here with us today. Um, he is a speaker today. And uh, also we have uh, three staff members from CIESF, Meng, Qingyong, and Vicky, who will... serve this uh, today's seminar better. Oh. No, no audio? Okay. Um, can you guys all hear me? Mong, Vicky, see you. Ching, can you hear yeah, me? I can see you. I, I can hear them. Mm. Okay. Mong, is audio, video all good? Oh, yes, yes. Okay, okay. We have two people confirm audio and video is all good. So I think Sharon, Sharon asked why um, no audio. Okay, I hope you have audio now. Okay, so uh, for, for today, we have a short introduction about our organization and also the speaker uh, bio. Then we'll hand over to the speaker, okay? Please allow me to introduce our organization. Uh, CIE, uh, Chinese Institute of Engineers was established in Cornell University back in 1917. Um, two uh, well-known founders are Zhang Tianyu and uh, Lin Hongxun. Um, CIE has a long history of serving the, the scientific and engineering community in the US, um, especially for Chinese and Asian uh, population. So in um, 2017, we celebrated a 100th anniversary in the Bay Area. Um, CIE currently has five other regional chapters like the New York metropolitan area and uh, Dallas, uh, Texas, and, and, and so on. Okay, so um, our Bay Area chapter was founded in 19, uh, 1979. And uh, here's a picture of the big anniversary event in 2019. So we have our 43rd um, anniversary in this year, 2022. Um, our object is uh, to serve engineers and uh, uh, students in, in the STEM um, area, um, in San Francisco Bay Area engineering community. <clears throat> the missions of <laughs> CIE USASF are to promote technological advancement, networking, and uh, communicating among engineers and scientists and to promote well-being of engineering community um, overall. So let me go to the next. So we um, hold various many, many activities in, in the past. Although uh, since pandemic, our uh, activities are uh, only online. Um, so we have held technical seminars like today. We have had the networking events and uh, uh, various volunteer community services, so on. We have a big banquet um, I see in the lower bottom 
uh, picture. So within our Bay Area chapter, we have a few technical groups. Um, today, we are the third one here, uh, electronic design technology group holding this uh, technical seminar today. And we also have emerging technology group, a EECS group and the Brown Medical Engineering group and also a young CIE group. Okay, so, so it's really um, a, a organi organization that tries to bring uh, people closer together. Um, we have uh, quite successful events like uh, the bowling and also some get together meals to bring uh, our people together. Okay. So like I said, uh, uh, 2020 to 2021, has been a virtual online year for us. Uh, we are quite active in, in, in these uh, online events. Uh, we move our webinars and uh, seminars to online via Zoom uh, like today. And we also um, post this video playback on our YouTube channel um, also for today's uh, video. So I saw a question about uh, the, the video channel. And uh, we, we have other virtual spaces like this. I think it's called the uh, Come Together. Okay, we have gained a lot of experience on how to organize events online. Um, but we uh, will also try to bring back person-to-person -person events uh, when the pandemic is a much better situation. And through our Eventbrite page and our YouTube channel, you can check out all the webinars we have done in the past. And most of them have video playback in our YouTube channel. Feel free to check, um, check it out. And I will have a um, contact page later for, for all the media channels that we have. So um, before I hand over to um, the speaker today, I have uh, just one little announcement about the upcoming events, which is on uh, January 25th on the topic, how to approach your company stock and concentrated stock positions. This is a financial education seminar for, for people who are interested to learn how to um, make use of uh, the stock benefits. And we'll have three more webinars uh, in February. So let me introduce the speaker today. Um, the topic today is, is model compression, compression always harmful to the performance of neural networks? Uh, we have Qing Jing, uh, who is a PhD student from Northeastern University. Um, he majors in computer engineering and uh, his research focuses on AI and the hardware acceleration. He has published in many uh, the top conferences in this field, uh, including CVPR, ICLR, AAAI, and the CICC, etc. He was awarded with the Best Student Paper uh, Award finalist in 2019. He has also worked in some uh, well-known companies, including Snapchat, ByteDance, and the Kwai Show. Um, he's, he, he agreed to post his LinkedIn uh, profile here. So if you want to connect, feel free. Um, he, uh, he's, he's being supervised by Professor Yan Z Wang, um, a assistant professor in the Department of Electrical and Computer Engineering at uh, Northeastern University. So um, I will just highlight his uh, current research interests include real-time and energy efficient deep learning and uh, AI systems, model compression and mobile acceleration of deep neural networks, deep learning acceleration for auto driving, 
neuromorphic computing and the non-von non -von Neumann computing paradigms, as well as cybersecurity in deep learning system. He was uh, also founded a uh, deep learning uh, company called the Coco Pi, which focuses on real-time deep learning solutions on edge devices. So uh, without further ado, let me hand over um, to the speaker, Ching, today. Thank you. I will okay. close my share screen so you can share. Okay, let me share. Yes, uh, yeah, go ahead. Okay. Thank you, Yanshu, for introducing me and uh, invite me here to give your talk. Uh, let me wait a moment here. Uh, you, you can see my screen, right? Yes. Okay, thank you. Uh, so let me start. Uh, today Achim, I will talk... you, you can sit back a little bit so we can see your camera better. Okay. Yeah. yeah, thanks. Yeah, thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, uh, sorry, I I have a problem on my on my on my nose because I have cold. So maybe I I will stop my video, uh, shortly. Uh, today I will talk about the uh, model compression here, and I will talk about is model compression always harmful to the performance of the neural networks. Uh, uh, today you everyone knows that today we are in an era of the deep neural, deep learning, and deep learning have a very uh, very wide application. And they, uh, the, the different models have a very, several different uh, uh, variant uh, architectures. Uh, for example, you can find the deep learning applied in, the, uh, in, in your watch, in, in your wearable devices, and then in, maybe in your cell phones, and in the uh, home, uh, smart home devices. And also in the, uh, in the drone, if you are playing them, you need to take the camera, uh, you need, need to use the drone to, uh, to capture some, some things. Uh, in, in nature, and also in your in your home, in a smart home, you have a lot of different devices in the home, and all of them are using the deep neural network to use the artificial intelligence. And also in the, for example, in the auto driving the auto driving vehicles, if people do not want to drive by themselves, they will use a deep model to help them to de determine if they need to go through or they can, they, they need to stop. Uh, so uh, and also there are a lot of different architectures uh, applied in the uh, in the in the city uh, in the industry and uh, for example in the early stage people maybe use some uh, some small model some simple model called the net which consists only several layers and and then maybe seven years uh, seven years ago uh, people developed developed more deep more uh, develop deeper networks with maybe. 30 to 100 layers called the rest connection with, with the rest connection. And then this is called the rest net. And then recently, maybe, uh, maybe two years ago, and then until now, people are more, uh, people are more interested in uh, much huge, uh, much huge, uh, uh, much huge models such as a bird or maybe GPT-3 to have a very strong, uh, very, very strong performance. But, but these models are very huge. So, uh, sorry. Uh, so we can find that the trend of the deep neural network is that there is a rapidly increasing in the model size, and as the neural network becomes stronger, they they, they are they also have a much bulkier size, and the computational cost is very huge. Uh, and on the left figure, you can see that for the convolution neural network and the transformer. With, with, with the time developed, the, the number of the parameters uh, of the network has increased from nearly uh, maybe maybe less than maybe 100, uh, sorry, maybe 1 million to currently maybe uh, maybe 100 billion, this one, right? So you can see that there is a very huge increase in the, in the model size, in the number of parameters. And for the transformer alone, in the past two years, you can find that the number of parameters increased in the industry from around 100 to the around maybe, as I think the, the, the unit is different, but it has increased maybe 100 times in only two years. So that you, we find that the number of parameters increased very fast and it is very 
you know, rapidly increase with the time, and there is some exponential increasing on the model side and also on the uh, continuous cost. So how can we apply them in our in different scenarios? Will be a very interesting and a uh, and a very, uh, very 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 important problem. Uh, to deal with this problem, to, to apply the neural networks uh, with a resource constraint system, uh, uh, sorry, wait. To, to apply the neural network in a resource constraint system, uh, people apply the, uh, some technique called model compression. So that in this in these models, they, they find that the system storage is reducing. For example, for the huge model, you can apply them in the cloud devices. You can apply them in, on the uh, clusters. They have a they have a huge uh, storage. However, if you want to uh, direct, uh, you if you want to gradually apply the model in some, for example, in your laptop, and then your cell phone, or, or in, even in some tiny devices, it is almost uh, impossible. So that with the more stringent resource constraint, we need to reduce also reduce the model size. This is this is the, what are what are the topic of the model compression is trying to solve. To make the model smaller and uh, uh, suitable to the to the devices to the small devices, uh, and to this end, there are some some different constraints and trade-offs to consider to to satisfy this requirement. Uh, some of them include the following: for example, first you need to uh, you need to guarantee that the, your model have a good accuracy and confidence. For example, if you are de detecting the human on the, on the by your auto driving car, you, you want to make sure that the, the, it, it it really detects some 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 human human in front of it, and the, and not only because not only you need to care about the accuracy of this, but also you need to care about if it is confident in its in its, de in its determination. Uh, and also, you need to maybe you need to uh, reduce your model size to suit to, to suit the, the the case in your in your application. For example, if you are you uh, using some you using some models in, in your uh, small devices in your cell phone, you cannot use a very huge model because they have a constraint uh, constraint uh, storage capacity. And also, there are some concerns about the energy consumption. For example, if your model is very huge, uh, when you apply them, it will uh, consume very uh, a lot of energy, and this is this will you know makes your maybe make makes your battery reduce very quickly. And the finally is the final thing, finally thing you need to uh, talk, you need to consider about is about the latency. For example, when you when you when you are using the deep uh, deep neural network in your auto driving device uh, auto driving vehicles, you need to determine the, the object in the on, on the street very quickly, very very in, in time, so that there will be no latency, no 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 uh, latency uh, on the on your determination, so you can stop your car on time to avoid the possible problem. So there are several different uh, there are several different aspects that you that you need to con consider about not only just uh, compress the model size but also other things you need to care about. And so that so that the, so that uh, so that the, the, the problem of the compressing neural networks is very challenging and the research on this problem is very fruitful and uh, have a lot of interest. Um, actually. You, you can find out from this figure for the last of maybe 30 years, the increase of the publication, number of publication every year for the, uh, for the network pruning has increased very, very rapidly. And then you maybe, uh, especially in the, maybe in the last five years, it had a very huge increasing on this topic. So you, had, you can find that this topic is not only fruitful, but also very interesting for the to the human. Um, for the model compression problem, there are several different popular techniques applied in the industry and also in the uh, academic. Uh, uh, for example, uh, one method is called the pruning. For the pruning, the network, the, the, the new network will be pruned arbitrarily on the with connection of the neurons so that the finally pruned model can be unstructured. 
this this type of method is, is applied uh, mostly early because people find that they are not quite friendly to the general devices. For example, if you want to apply them on the CPU and the, or maybe on your GPU, you, you need to, you know, you need to not only storage the uh, waste in the network, uh, but also you need to, sorry, you, you know, you, you need to not only store the waste, you, you need to store the waste, but also you need to store the connection, the, the index of your, inside your neural networks. So that later people start to focus on the method called the slimming. By the slimming, people uh, structurally uh, prune the model so that there can be, um, they can finally determine a small model with uh, some with, with some whole channel pruned. And the final model is more structured and friendly to the general devices. And another method is called the quantization, where people do not prove the connection in the model, but reduce the precision inside the model for, for the width or the activation. So in this talk, I will mainly talk about the latter two methods called the swimming and the quantization to see that if we can, you know, when we compress the model, can we get a better performance uh, than the original huge one, so that we can get uh, some useful uh, uh, practical solution to the to the model to the to the task we are dealing with. Um, uh, for, firstly, I will talk about the neural network quantization. For the network quantization, people will typically quantize on the weight and activation. Uh, for the weight quantization, there are several different methods applied, and one of the most in, uh, most uh, popular method is uh, called the Dorefa method. For this Dorefa method, people will first uh, clamp the weights from the real real axis from the whole real axis into onto the range of the between zero and one, so that if the weights are on the uh, on, in the interval of, of the zero and one, and uh, you quantize on them. It, it will have much. It will have much effect by the cost by the outlier, because all values are now in the on the interval between between zero and one. Uh, for the activation quantization, people also need to deal about the deal with the problem of the of the outlier, and the people use some method called the pact that, uh, for for the activation, you, you need to first clip the First, clip the value by some by some by some twin parameter alpha, so that the, the value is the value before quantization will also be on the interval on some interval between zero and one. And by training the uh, training the clipping level, we can achieve a better performance uh, uh, than previous with some with, with very huge improvement by this method. So these two methods are most popular methods for the neural network quantization for both ways and activation. Uh, the neural network quantization have some advantage here. For example, they have, as I said, they have some low energy, they have some short uh, latency, and the model side by the quantized model is much smaller than the original one. However, previous way, previous methods find that the, the quantized model always have a low accuracy than the full precision part counterpart. So this is the question that if the low accuracy uh, due to the model size itself, I mean that if, if this is limited by the model capacity from the model quantization, or if this is due to some problem of our training method. And our work find that this is actually the, the, the low accuracy of the model, model quantization Due to that, they are not trained correctly. If we can train the correct train the model correctly, actually we can get a better performance than than for the quantized model than the full precision model. This means that the quantized model can support their full precision part by suitably training. Uh, so in the following, I will talk about four different aspects of the quantization techniques. I will first about how the how can the quantized models support the full precision counterparts, and then I will talk about some work that talk uh, that can implement implement the adaptive neural network quantization, so that the model can itself adaptive to different bit width. And then I will talk about 
how to use some new new architecture methods to search the search the quantization between so that you can determine the uh, fractional uh, sorry you can determine the bit list bit width for the width and activation in different layers automatically instead by some human uh, uh, by some manual method and finally i will discuss some uh, new results of the fixed point quantization this is the very recent results that, that can save the save the uh, computation cost further than previous method uh, for the quantized model uh, i will first about uh, talk about the skill adjusted training method to make the model to make the quantized model support the full precision model uh, for a general model, for example, if the model, if the neural network is a re re repeating of several different blocks, and each block we consider some linear layer, uh, followed by batch norm layer and activation, and finally pooling layer, we can find that if we need to use, for example, if we need to use a cross entropy loss, I mean we are using the softmax for the for the network, there is some constraint that we. That, that is uh, that is applied on the on the on the final layer that must to must must have satisfied so that the model can be efficiently trained. This is what we call the efficient training rule. First, by this method, by, by this by this rule, we require that the, the variance of the weights in the last layer cannot be very large. Otherwise, if the weights weights become very large. There can be cause, it can cause some overfitting problem. This is the first rule we find that we find about. And the second rule that we find is, is, is that the, the, the gradient of the width between different uh, between adjacent uh, between two adjacent layers should be on the same order. So with to so to satisfy this problem to set to satisfy this uh, principle. We should either use the batch norm layer, for example, in the mode net or the rest net, or if we, we do not use the batch, batch norm layer uh, directly, we need to use some, we need to make sure the variance of, of the width inside the, the, the layer, in, for example, for the convolution layer, to satisfy some constraint together with the number of the neurons in the, in the layer. Uh, so with this rule, these two rules, we start to investigate the problem of the uh, of the previous quantization method. For example, for the weight quantization with the Dorefa uh, with the Dorefa method, we find that even if we directly use the non-quantized uh, weights, but apply the clamping operation on that, so that the, the weights value from the original uh, real axis is uh, is mapped into the region between zero and one. If you do this only, but do not quantize the weights, so there is no effect of the quantization. We find that the variance of the weights by this operation can be increased a lot, especially if the number of the neurons is very large. For example, for the immunized classification, the, the number of neurons for each layer is around maybe 1,000. 1, so that for, for this case, the increase in the weight variance can be maybe around 50 times. So due to this effect, especially for the last layer, we know that the, 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 the efficient training rule of the, our previous method will be broken. For example, if we train the model with the original ways, with the original ways, these ways are very small, are small enough and not enlarged. By these ways, we, we can find the, we can uh, investigate the learning curve of the model as a black one in this figure, you can find that the, 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 the solid line is a training error and the dash line is a validation error. They, they are, they, they are the, the difference between them is reasonable between the two uh, black lines. However, if we, if we climb the waist into, uh, if we climb the waist so that the, the, the variance between, be, of the climate waste is maybe it's 50 times larger. And the train, we, we train the model directly. We can find that on, on, the, on the red line shows the, so show the performance of this model. You can find that the, the training error become very small than previous, but the validation error become, become larger. 
So the, the, the difference between these two is, is much larger than previous. So the, there is very uh, serious um, overfitting problem. So that th this means that even if without the condensation, here we only apply the clamping, even without the condensation, the performance of the model is, very, is not good enough. And this is the problem, the key issue of the previous method of the DORIFA. And not the, and the performance of the, and the, 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 the better performance of this method is not due to the condensation, but due to the clamping operation. So to solve this method, we directly, if we directly scale, the back, scale back the width of the clamp width to the original width to make the scaled width have the same variance as the original one. And we train the model, we can find that they are shown as the blue line in the figure. And we can find that although the training area may be worse than previous, than the vanilla one, but the validation area is, is much smaller than the, than the clamped, clamped network. So that we can find that with our skilled method, the overfitting of the, I mean, the difference between the training and the validation area is much reduced than the, than the clamped version. And we can achieve a similar performance as the, as the original model. So this is what, have, what we propose as a skill adjusted training method. Uh, next, we also investigated, investigated the, effect, the, the, the effect of the condensation on the neural network width. And we find that as long as the, width, as the number of the bits, uh, or, or number of bits for the width are larger, are larger than the maybe four or five, the effects of the quantization itself is negligible. And even if we, if, even if for maybe a uh, bit width or two or, or one, for this case, we can apply, uh, we can scale the uh, quantized width back so that the quantized width uh, will have the same variance as the previously uh, unquantized width. So there can be, this can alleviate the problem of the, of the overfitting. So we can, with our method, we can compare the model with, with different uh, uh, performance uh, on different models on the internet classification. And we compare them with the full precision model and also previous method. We can see from these four figures that for all the networks and uh, for, all, for, the, for, the, for the two different models and for different scenarios, I mean the both quantization and the with only quantization, our, our method is always better than previous one and previous method. And also for sufficient bit width, even if they are quantized, for example, for this one, for the six bit width, uh, for the bit width of six, even if the model is quantized so that the, the capacity of model is, is reduced, the, the quantized model can surpass the full precision model. And for all, all those cases, we can surpass them. So this means that the quantized model can be better the in performance than the full precision model, not only in the speed or the energy or the maybe model size, but also that they can perform better than the full precision model. Uh, this is the first work that demonstrates that the quantized model can be better than the uh, full, full precision model in the world. Uh, the next work that uh, we, I want to talk about is something that uh, we can train a model one time and uh, uh, directly apply them uh, on different scenario. Uh, so for, for this, for this uh, application case, uh, people care about that. If we want to apply the model, deploy the model for the different cases, for example, if you are using your cell phone, maybe your cell phone have a different condition on the battery. Maybe sometimes the battery is full and sometimes the battery is very short. short. So that in, in this case, in different cases, Maybe you need to use a different model. For example, if you are you have you have a sufficient bed, you, you have you have sufficient charge in your battery, then you can use a good model. Uh, however, if you are you are short of battery, maybe you don't want to use a very huge model because they are very time, uh, power consuming. So that in different cases, maybe you you need to use a different models, uh, different types of models, and in this case. Uh, in, in previous method, people need to train several different models to apply on the different cases and need to store all four of them. And this is uh, this will increase the 
uh, burden on the on how to you how do you uh, store the different model? On the other hand, um, so recently people uh, propose that we can use some adaptive model that we we only stop uh, we only store one 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 model and that model can be applied on different scenarios so that they can be shrinkaged or maybe they can be shrinked or maybe use some other method to to determine the architecture or the structure or the or the configuration of the model to apply on different cases and for different cases we can switch between the different configurations uh, to achieve the uh, to achieve the, uh, you can call the adaptive model. Uh, previously, people use some different methods. For example, some work use the width, change the change the number of channels in different layer in the model, so that uh, the whole model can be used. Uh, the the whole model can be uh, can be shrinked in slimmed into different number of channels and uh, can be applied together uh, applied on different cases to achieve a similar uh, to achieve uh, always achieve good performance. Uh, also, there are some other methods that uh, combine every several different uh, dimensions to 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 make them adaptive. For example, they can change the re resolution of the input, or maybe they can ch change the depth of the network, and also they can change how many kernels to use, and uh, and also the I mean how large the kernel size they are want to use. And also the ways they, they want to use. There are some different methods to train these this networks. However, previously, uh, people seem to forget that we can also do this on the bitwiz. So what about if we you know, train a model that can be applied on different uh, settings of, of the weight and the activation precision? Uh, to understand that, why should we Care about the where should we focus on the bit width rather than, for example, rather than on the width. Here we want to compare the accuracy of the model uh, with the um, with the size and the computation cost ratio, computation cost compression ratio of the of the quantization of the quantization and the uh, under the slimming. I mean quantization method. On this figure, you can find that uh, under the same on the same compression ratio, the quantized model is able to achieve a much better performance than their than the much better good and much better accuracy than the than the sleeping model. And also for the same accuracy, they can compress the model heavier. They can compress the model with a much larger uh, compression ratio. Com compression ratio, for example, on the on the model side or on the bit ops, so that you can find that the quantization method is more promising than the full precision. Uh, sorry, than 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 the uh, network slimming method. Uh, so that uh, bit bit width should be more promising than 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 you know. I mean, pruning on the uh, pruning on the bit width should be more uh, promising than pruning on the uh, number of channels. So this this lead to the uh, method that if we can you know uh, we can in uh, in, in contrast to the train several different models for different uh, for different uh, uh, precisions of the weights and the activations, is that possible that we train only one model that is suitable for the adaptive to different uh, uh, quantization precision? Um, scenario so that the, when we when we apply the model we only deploy once and uh, you know to to switch between the different uh, application between the different com configuration to <coughs> to make it uh, suitable to our uh, application case uh, to this end we find that we not only need to switch the batch norm as a previous method Previous, for example, streaming the network, they need to switch the batch norm in the in the network. We find that we also need to switch the clipping level for the for the for the quantized network, so that the different different precision for the same model with different precision, they can have a different batch norm layer, and also they can have a different clipping level. So that in this way, 
by this method, by this clipping, switchable clipping level, we can achieve a reasonable results, reasonable performance and comparable to the original uh, separate ones. Then if we, we do not use them, we can achieve better performance. And if we plot the final chain model with, a, with a, for example, for the more than V1, we, we plot the, the clipping level for different layers and uh, with, with different uh, uh, precision, we can find that, for example, for the 8-bit, the clipping level is much larger than the case of the 4-bits. So that the larger bits will require, uh, will require, will, will require a larger um, clipping level. And this demonstrates that uh, we, our switching, sw switchable clipping level is necessary here for a good performance of the, of the adaptive uh, quantized model. Uh, with the adaptive model, uh, not either the uh, both the adaptive model and the previous uh, content model, they will use the uh, homogeneous weights, a uh, homogeneous precision for weights and activation for each layer. And uh, this is uh, this can achieve good performance for a uh, high pre pre precision, but for the low precision case, for the uh, for the ultra compression case, uh, people find that the performance is not good and. Uh, you know, for, for different layer, maybe maybe we need to use a different uh, um, precision to achieve a good uh, uh, to achieve a to achieve a huge uh, compression ratio, but also achieve a good performance. For example, maybe for the first layer and for the last layer, we need to use some uh, we need to use some uh, high precision, but for the middle layer because they are more they are more far away from two end. Maybe we need to use, use a, a smaller. Uh, we we need we we, we can uh, compress them further so that the, the totally there can be uh, new optimization on this uh, on this configuration. So to achieve this, people care about how to search the precision of weights and the activation for each layer because you know if you want if you want to determine them them by yourself by by human manually. It, is, it can be very difficult because, because there are a lot of different layers and the, the choice of them is very, very huge. So the search space is very, is very large. So to achieve, this, to achieve this, people want to you know, search the precision for the weights and the activation. And the previous method, maybe you know, need to first search them. And after searching, they need to train the model again. And after the training and the search again, and the, Continue this for several loops to determine the final configuration. Uh, here we propose some other method that can can do this one shot. I mean that we can determine the uh, precision of weights and activation together with the training of the weights. So that after we we only do this one shot, we only train the model one one time, and after the training, both the precision of the weights and activation, as well as the uh, uh, the value of the weights are determined by our by our method. To achieve this, we mix the model to to be trained first first with the searching on together with the searching on the precision, and make the precision to be really to uh, and, and we lose the precision of the weights and the activation to some real number instead of only integer values, so that the, um, we use some. Uh, Simple linear interpolation between two adjacent bit precision to make to effectively effectively achieve a, a fractional fractional precision of the weights and the activation. And the during training, on the on the later stage, we find that the bit width is uh, almost uh, um, almost converged, so that we discretize discretize on the on the ways, uh, so that they, they only have some fixed values. They, they, they fix to some uh, determined integer value and then we further fine tune on the ways. So in this way, we only train one shot and achieve uh, and determine the ways and, uh, and the precision together. Uh, also, we, we, we not only implement the fractional, uh, fractional lines for the, for the I mean, we, we implement the fractional bit width for, for the width and the activation. We also uh, generalize this to an arbitrary function so that we can, 
we can uh, penalize on the computational cost or maybe on the model size, where the computational cost is determined by the by the fractional fractional bitwidth of the weights and the application and the size is only determined by the precision of the weights. So our method compared to previous method, our method is differentiable instead of some maybe reinforcement learning method because differentiable is more friendly to the GPU and can, can be faster. And also our method is one shot instead of the maybe we, there are no iteration between training and the searching. And also our method can be applied with a layer wise, both layer one and layer wise and the kernel wise. This means that we can assign, we can assign the precision, different precision for different ch channels of the model of the of the of the of each layer so that there can be further in uh, further searching space a, a larger searching space for our case uh, this is because that our method is faster than previous methods so we can do this very very effectively and efficiently uh, we apply this method on the with some computational cost constraint quantization here we 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 show the performance of our of the layer wise case, and for the moment that we one v two and rest eighteen, our method can achieve a better performance than previous uh, either homogeneous performance or homogeneous quantization, or, or the uh, or the searching method the the mixed precision, our method is always better than previous one, and uh, if we look at the precision we searched with our method. For example, for the moment that we, we find that we, we, we find that for the for the early for the first layer and for the last layer, the precision for the for the width and the activation are typically very large, are typically larger. And for the inner layer, they are smaller. And also for the for the point of convolution, maybe the precision requirement is smaller than the than the depth wise convolution. And for the ResNet 18, we also find that there are similar performance, uh, similar behavior. That is, for maybe for some inner layer, the the precision can be can be smaller, but for the outer layer, they typically uh, are more re re required to be larger. Uh, we also apply our method with some kernel wise, uh, I mean channel wise method, uh, and we find that our method is also better than previous method. Uh, with with, uh, with with low precision, for example, with four with, with three bits uh, of the computation cost, our our performance is better than, than them. And uh, and if we compare the perform uh, compare the uh, if we see uh, if we check the precision of the weights of uh, uh, of different layers, we we can find that for the for example for the monad, maybe the um, maybe the Maybe the depth wise layer, uh, maybe the depth wise layer requires, uh, sorry, uh, this, I, I think this is the depth wise layer. For, for the depth wise layer, maybe they can have some, uh, maybe they, they, they require more, uh, they, they require more precision than, than the, than the uh, point wise, like point -wise uh, layers. And uh, for the, for the ResNet 18, we find that. Uh, for the early layers, they, they require maybe a smaller bit width than the later layer. For the later layer, they may require maybe three or four uh, uh, bits. But for the early layer, they only require two or three bits. Uh, so, so the fractional bits is able to search the precision. However, uh, for, the, for all of the previous method, the, the model is is quantized with some simulate some method called a simulated quantization. Uh, here we compare four different different methods. The first is called a full precision model. For the full precision full precision model, the weights and the inputs are full precision, and they multi multiply together to accumulate into a, to get the output. And all all operations are uh, implemented with a thirty two uh, floating point value. Uh, for the simulated quantization, people usually only quantize on the on the convolution on the fully connected layers, and the, but leave the scaling and also the batch norm layer to be full precision. To this part, they they um, they first implement uh, maybe eight bit integer uh, integer width and the input, 
and then uh, multiply, multiply them to get maybe 32 bits integers and uh, accumulate these values to get some some uh, convolution results and uh, to and uh, scale them back with, with some dequantization method. The dequantization method can be either implemented with uh, full precision, uh, I mean, with some floating point values to, to write requantize to get the uh, output, or, or they can be maybe dequantization can be implemented with the integer uh, using some 32 bit integer and the multiplication, and then do the bit shifting to, to get uh, maybe output with the 8 bit integer. Uh, these two methods, they all need to do the dequantization and they need to do the, they need to do the, the scaling, I mean the multiplication in the 32 bits. So this can, you know, not only, you know, in, increase the computational cost, this will introduce an extra layer. And this extra layer, maybe you, you introduce some latency in the final model, final model application. So in our resonant work, we 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 wonder we wonder that if it is possible to you know eliminate eliminate the uh the, the scaling part directly, and then only use some bit shifting so that in this way we can eliminate an extra step, and this extra step because you for this step you you need to use the thirty two bit integer multiplication, so it is costly. We want to remove this costly part, and also this part maybe. A not friendly to maybe uh, some new devices. For example, if you want to do the uh, in-memory computing, th this this part may be not very friendly. So we, we wonder that if we can implement this uh, th this operation with a fixed point quantization so that we do not need to do the 32-bit multiplication. Uh, to this end, we studied the prob uh, the 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 uh, the, the method of the fixed point arithmetic. Uh, for the arithmetic uh, multiplication, you can find that you can multiply two uh, fixed point values. And after that, you determine the uh, fractional length of the final results and only maybe store the, the internal value of this. For example, uh, the, the, here is an example. Uh, if you multiply two values, you will quantize the, uh, and determine the, the final value is only the inner, uh, some, some inner value, in, in, inner part of it with eight bits. The, the result is uh, quantized, uh, uh, there, is some, uh, there is some loss in the precision on the, on the final results. Uh, the, the fixed point of quantization have some advantages than, than the floating point of, uh, operation on the integer. For example, the floating point operation is not energy, is not energy efficient, and they have a higher, uh, they have a larger latency. Also, they are, for example, if you want to apply deploy the model on the DSP, they are not very versatile. versatile. For example, if you if you implement the DI, uh, the, the floating point multiplication on the DSP, there is only one implementation method. Um, but for the fixed point implement, implementation, there are maybe maybe more than eight, more, more than several uh, several turns, um, different implement, implementations, and also the floating point is at, at, at high in precision. Uh, for the integer part, they have a good energy efficiency and uh, and they have low latency. However, they are also not very versatile. Versatile, for example, for the integer multiplication, they, you only you also only have a, maybe one implementation. You cannot determine the uh, fraction length of the integer because they, they only the fraction length is always zero. And uh, and also for the integer integer multiplication, the precision is not very good because there are some limitation in the uh, they cannot some represent some fraction fractional values. So, uh, but with a fixed point multiplication, we can achieve a good, uh, a good energy and a latency. Together, we have a, a high versatility and a, and a we can have a good uh, high precision. So this is why we want to study if we can use a fixed point to replace the about two. Uh, to see the potential of the fractional, uh, to see the potential of using a fixed point multiplication in the, in the neural networks, we first studied that the, 
uh, study the effective ways of the of the full precision mobile V two, and we found that for different layers, the the the, the effective weight range can be can be quite different. For example, for this layer, the, the weight range is very small, right? But for some other layers, the weight range can be very large. Maybe the, the difference between the weight range can several times or maybe even 100 or larger. So that this means that the, if we directly use the integer or maybe some uh, determined fraction lines for each layer, for all later layers, then that, that can be not very, um, Meaningful because you know for for some layers for for some layer there can be some overflow problem, or for some other layer there can be some overflow problem, so we need to determine the have some method to determine the fraction length of each layer, and the the, the right figure also demonstrate also verify that we, with our final trend model we check the uh, fraction length of each layer, and we find that, and and we find that for different layers. The fraction length requirement is quite different. For example, for the for some early layer and for some uh for some depth size layer, this is for known as V2. For some depth size layers, the width will need some fraction length of near zero. But for also some for some other layers, the, the fraction length can be very large. For example, can be six. So so this means that we, we need to have find some method to determine the fraction length for the width and the activation. Uh, of the whole model. Uh, uh, to this end, we, we found that uh, uh, we can do, we, we did some stati statistical analysis and find that we can determine the fraction lines automatically by the, uh, by the, by the running variance, uh, sorry, by the variance of the weights and the activation. For example, here, we, we check that for different uh, uh, Gaussian distributed random variables, uh, we, we plot the relative error Against the, the variance of the weights, uh, of variance of the weights, and we find that the for, for different variance, the required uh, the optimal fraction length can be different for 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 the uh, for, for for them, and also to, to reduce the uh, relative error. And if we uh, we always choose the optimal the 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 best fraction length and plot the op the minimum relative error, we find that for very large range. If we always choose them we, for a very large range. We can achieve very small uh, relative error, maybe less than one person. Also, um, we find that there are some you know staircase uh, phenomena of the optimal fraction to get, uh, with respect to the uh, logarithm of the uh, variance. So that if we if we, or, uh, if we try to fit the threshold of this uh, this uh, standard deviation. With our optimal fraction, I mean, I mean, with the, with the, with the, with the, the optimal fraction as we want to use, we can find that on the log log plot, the autom the nearly satisfy some uh, linear linear method linear relationship. So with this method, we can determine the the fraction as for the sun on the on sun the. Uh, Real Gaussian numbers directly, and uh, we can, and uh, we find that uh, actually we find that the packed, uh, the the one I mentioned before, the packed quantization method, is closely related to the fixed point quantization. Both of them involve some clipping and running uh, uh, running effect, and uh, we can reformulate the packed with the fixed point quantization, and uh, with the fixed point quantization, we can implement the. Uh, uh, we implement the pilot quantization with the fixed point multiplication and achieve a good performance. And here we also find that the fraction less, uh, sorry, we find that the, um, for, for some layer, if, if they have the same, they have also, they follow the same layer. For example, for these two layers, both of them are following the, this same layer. The, 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 the input to, to them are determined by the output of, the, of this parent layer. So for these two layers, we find that they need to have the uh, same. They need to have the. They need to share the same fractional lines, but they can have a different fractional lines. If we are we are using different fractional lines for them. We can achieve a good performance, and this is very critical to the performance of this model. Uh, so we with this uh, with with this uh, with our method of the fixed fixed point quantization. We can achieve a good performance for 
for for the mobile net and the rest net on, on the model and uh, achieve a better performance uh, and, and a comparable performance on the full precision model and better than previous method. And this demonstrates that even without the uh, 32 bit 32 bit scaling multiplication, we, we can achieve a we, we can achieve a good performance. So previously, I'm, I mainly talk about the new network quantization. Here, I want to talk more about the pruning. Uh, I, I, mainly, I will mainly talk about the pruning by the new architecture search method and also together with the knowledge distillation technique. Uh, here, I mainly talk about the compression of generative new networks, especially the GAN network. And we will I will talk about our previous method called the compression teaching. Uh, it is called a CAD. Uh, the compression, the, the GAN model will uh, will will, will transfer, transfer some image in, in one domain into another domain. For example, it can transfer the uh, image from the horse into the zebra. Uh, for the image generation, GAN models are typically very huge in size and costly in computing, so that these models are typically not very friendly to the mobile devices. And also deploying the GAN on the edge devices is very challenging. And especially if you want to generate a good perform a high quality image uh, with a fast and smaller model on the mobile devices, it is not very easy. For example, here we show the previous results. Uh, the original model is very huge in the computational cost and the performance is very good. The, the lower FID means a better image quality here. And uh, you can find that the original huge model is good, but they are not they are very uh, they are not compatible to the small to the to the mobile devices. Uh, there are some there are some compression methods, although they can compress the model very very large, very, very hugely, but, but the performance, the image quality can be worse because the FID is increased. So that uh, we wonder if we can achieve the, some method that uh, that can achieve a better image quality with a much reduced computation cost. Uh, to this end, we, we find that we, we first introduced the method of the uh, of previous work of the inception the inception module. The inception inception module used several different kernels of the inside of the neural network inside of one block, so that we use several different kernels. For example, one, three, five. We use three of them, and we use different types of blocks. Here we use the conventional types and also use the uh, bottleneck blocks, and we use them together to to build our basic block to search on that. Uh, in this way, we can enlarge the search space. Uh, we also use uh, use the inception block in the into the uh, speed module, uh, in the speed module, and also the speed residual block models. Uh, also, in order to search the search the architecture, previously people will first train a model, and after train the very, train a very huge model, supernet model. After that, that they need to search on the model, and with this searching, they will evaluate the model. So the the searching call, searching itself may be called can cost one, maybe one day for, with, uh, with, with eight GPU. So this is very costly. However, we find that we can directly uh, prune the model, uh, prune the layer, uh, prune the channel directly based on the, um, based on the pre-trained model and uh, prune on the layers with, uh, with, with some, uh, with, with, with small uh, scaling factors in a, in a batch norm layer. And with, uh, with with other other method, we can prune the model maybe in several minutes, several seconds. But for the previous method, maybe they need to prune the model with with, uh, with more than one day. So the searching cost the, the searching cost can be reduced by one ten thousand times. Uh, we also found that to to give a, to get a better performance, we after we prune the model, we need to because we have already trained the uh tra we have already trained the uh the, the the we have already trained the huge model for pruning. We we want to further we want to reduce re reuse what we have. So we want to uh so we want to use the uh, uh use the original huge model as a teacher to do the knowledge distillation to 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 get a good performance. 
Okay, and and we found that we, we need to use some uh uh we, we found that a, a previous method maybe use some knowledge distillation based on the mean square error. Here they they will introduce some learnable distill layers, and this can this need to in, introduce some extra layers, and this can cause some performance drop. And however, we we, we introduce some uh knowledge some some new method called a kernel alignment method, so that we can directly align the two kernel, the, the two features from the teacher and the student. And with our method, we can achieve a good performance with a much reduced uh, uh, continuing cost than the original model and, uh, and better than the previous method. Uh, uh, we compare our method on several different tasks, for example, for the cycle gun on the host zebra. And you can find that with our method, with our method here, our method, we, our, our figure, our generated figure have much less uh, uh, flawed in you know, the generated figure than the original huge models. And this shows that the performance is better. And also here, you can find that our, 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 image, our method generates more content in, into the figure than the original one compared to the ground truth. Uh, and also we can find that for the, for the GAN, we also apply that for the Gaussian model, which is very large. And we can find that with our method, we can generate more correct results than the, than the original huge model. And the image is more, more is clearer. Uh, so I want to summarize a little here. Um, we, we know that deep learning and the neural network is a very uh, ubiquitous today with a very wide uh, application. And uh, however, the neural networks become bulkier with a huge model size and the demand more computational cost. And uh, we apply the, if we want to apply the neural networks in resource constrained devices, we need to compare the neural networks. And previously, uh, people usually use the quantization and the pruning method to compress the model. Uh, we, we find that the, we, based on our, my talk, we find that neural network quantization can, can achieve a better performance than the full precision model. And they can be made uh, to be adaptive and uh, combined with the NAS method to determine the bit width uh, automatically. And uh, we also find that for the network pruning with architecture search, we can compress the model with, without sacrificing the performance, even for the different uh, generation tasks. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Chi. Thank you, Chi. Yes, yeah, thank you. Thank you. Mm. Do you have a question? Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, let me share. Uh, yeah, let's take a break. Um, I know we are uh, quite fast towards the end of the presentation. Um, yeah, thank you, Ching, for offering a, a very solid lecture uh, model comprehension. And uh, it's surprised to see that after compressing the models uh, using various techniques and the performance sometimes is better. And uh, let me, uh, yeah, I'm showing this uh, slide on, on different media channels of CIE. Uh, can you guys see it? There's uh, six or seven QR codes. Uh, we are on, yeah, here, here's our website. We post uh, event information on our website and uh, you may sign up a CIE e-newsletter, which is bi-weekly. We have Facebook, uh, Facebook. Uh, we have WeChat, LinkedIn, and the YouTube channel, and uh, Line chat. So um, our staff member, Vicky, will hand, uh, handle the Q&A for today. Um, so I will hand over to Vicky. So anyone have any question? Um, I have two questions for, for the guest. Mm -hmm. oh, okay, so uh, Chin, you have talked about uh, many about the computer vision model compression. So my first question is, is there any major difference between the computer vision and the NLP model compression. And the second question is, 
about some practical coding. So uh, I use some mixed training, mixed precision training before. Is there any like kind of common mistakes that we we probably will make? So do you have some general uh, coding tricks for uh, model compression algorithms? Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, so for the first question, uh, I will ask first answer the first question. You, you mean that uh, is there any you know for the difference between the uh, conservation and the uh, natural language processing? Uh, yeah. I have not. Uh, I have. I, I do not have much experience on the uh, on the natural language processing, uh, but I have read some papers previously. Um, I think that uh, the, the main part is that uh, based on my based on my reading, I found that the one, one, one important part is that the neural network, uh, sorry, for the natural natural language processing, maybe for example, if you are using the transformer, they will have some different layers. For example, you will you will have a different activation function. You will need to use some uh, more nonlinear function other than the ReLU, right? Because ReLU is directly uh, at, at least they are semi-linear, so that for the ReLU, the, the, you can you can contact them them easily. But for the for the for the other uh, nonlinear question, for uh, sorry, for the other nonlinear function, for example, for the GALU or for the others, uh, maybe people ha have already already used some uh, some uh, polynomial approximation method to 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 approximate this. So this will cause some uh, for, uh, some extra uh, errors, um, but uh, but I think most of them are related to the uh, different layers. And also another type is that if you are using a layer norm layer, for example, if you are using a layer norm layer, they ca you cannot not fuse them into the convolution or the linear layers, or you cannot fuse them with a transformer uh, attention module, so that they can introduce extra extra steps because for example for the fixed point I mentioned you we, we can combine the we, we can we, we can fuse the batch norm layer together with the convolution but but for the layer norm there that is not possible. Uh, I, I'm I'm not sure if this answers your question uh, uh, I'll answer your que first question. Yeah yeah very okay. informative. Thank you. Uh, for the second question uh, could you repeat your second question for sorry uh, yeah, so uh, I've tried to use some model compression algorithm before, such as simply just change uh, 32 byte uh, floating to uh, half precision. So when I'm saving and loading the models, there's always some issues when I'm using TensorFlow. So I guess you are the expert, so you, you implement all those algorithms. So do you have some general tips or uh, tricks for, for when coding? Uh, I, I think based on my experience, uh, the, the first thing is that uh, for, uh, 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 I, I want to say that I never use TensorFlow because they are very difficult to use. Uh, I mostly okay. use the PyTorch. And for the PyTorch, one, one, one issue is that I, I, I always Im, first implement my algorithm with a simulated quantization. So I, I mean that we, we use the floating point operations to, to check the performance, to, to check the Algorithm performance, and after that, um, after after we find that the, the, the final model the, the final performance is good, uh, before we apply our method deploy our method in the real application, we maybe use some you know C C++ uh, code to to re to rewrite them or maybe use some. Actually, I never use C++. I use a PyTorch, but with with some integer values. So there's all of them are integer values, integer operations in Python. And, uh, but uh, based on my experience, uh, at least for PyTorch, the, the integer operations are only supported on the, on the CPU. They do not support on the GPU. The, for the GPU, they must use the floating point operation. I'm not sure if this clear, if this answer your question. Yeah, it is very useful because I, I was using TensorFlow and I feel it's very hard to use. Yeah, I think that Python is much easier to use than TensorFlow, and I can save a lot of your time. Unless, you, for example, if you are, in a, you are in a company and they require you to use that for your product, 
I'm not sure in that case if there is a solution, but if, there, you, are, if you are doing research, I, I think PyTorch is, is much easier to use. And uh, there are a lot of previous work to, to, to use previous uh, you know, code to reuse. All right, thank you. No problem, thank you. Uh, one, one question from audience. Did you do the experiment on GPU, FPGA, or other platform? Does each experiment usually take minutes, hours, or days? If we want to reproduce some of the experiment results, report here. Is there any open source code that we can leverage? Okay, sure. Uh, let me check. Uh, uh, for the first question, uh, most of my previous work are done on the uh, on the GPU, and uh, for the only for the last uh, maybe for the for the um for the uh, for the F8 night, we 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 check that on the CPU with the integer operation, uh, because that is a fixed point of fixed point of condition. Uh, I have never used the FPGA. I do not have experience on that. Uh, does each experiment really take minutes, hours? Uh, it depends on your experiments. You know, for example, for for your, if you are working on the, and and it also depends on how many GPU you have. <laughs> for example, if you are using a CPU with a with, with a quantization technique, you want to check that on the minute. I, I try that maybe that will can take one hour or more, or longer. But but uh, if you are using a GPU with the uh, with the same uh, with, with with the same task, it can maybe take uh, at most uh, five minutes or less. Uh, so it depends on how many resources you have. And uh, I have never worked on FPGA, so I do not know how many how long that will require. Another question: If we want to reproduce, yes, uh, I think uh, except for the for the fixed point condition, because this is a new. Accepted paper. I have not yet released the code on the GitHub, but for all others, I have released them. So you you can you can freely use them on, on the GitHub. Uh, maybe I can share the I can share the uh, project page to or uh, to you by some way. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, hi, Vicky. Do you see other questions on Slido, maybe? No, there's no more questions on Slido. Okay, Vicky, do you have any questions? So, just curious, uh, compression model has this uh, capacity and less degree of freedom. Why do you think they uh, suppress the original larger model? Yeah, uh, I think that the, the, the one, one thing is that the, 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 there can be some you know, redundancy in the, in the original huge model. This is the one, uh, one factor that they can, uh, the, the, the compression model can be better uh, than the than the original huge model. Uh, another thing is that, uh, for for the huge model because they have a, a large, uh, they have a very huge number of the parameters. There can be some overheating on the on the data side because you know for the maybe the number of the data is less than the number of the parameters. So the 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 model can learn some noise in the data. So for the for the compressed model, uh, because they have some constraint, so that they, they can they are not able to learn the noise. So maybe this is the reason why they why the why the maybe compressed model can can be better than the compressed uh, than, than the huge model. Yeah. Thank you. Anyone have additional question? 
maybe I can ask an easy question. So uh, your, your advisor, Professor Wang, um, founded the company CocoPan, and uh, what can you say about the company and uh, what, what is the future product? Uh, can you say a little bit? Uh, to my knowledge, I, I'm not quite uh, familiar with their work uh, because you know I was working on another direction. I, I my work is not quite uh, uh, coincide with their work. Uh, because I, I'm collaborating with an, with another uh, in, uh, professor in another university. Uh, however, uh, I, I think that they, they have already have some uh, they already have very some very good solution to the. Uh, new level compression and uh, they can achieve uh, for for a lot of different applications they can achieve a real real time uh, solutions on very time uh, on very resource constraint uh, uh, platforms for example you can you can they can achieve the uh, super resolution uh, with in real time uh, for the for on on, the, on your mobile devices and this is almost impossible with some other uh, with with, uh, with previous method, this is not imaginable because uh, uh, there there are solutions. They, they, they are trying to combine the. They are trying to do the co-optimization of the uh, of the software and the compiler. Uh, so th this is you know you know what what they can achieve. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Uh, so Vicky, uh, do you have more questions? I, I know you are also working in data science machine learning field. Maybe I can ask more, maybe later. Yeah, I think I need to read kind of more because I don't do much about conversion before, so I would need to read more. Yeah, and one question from ODN is, as neural network uh, accuracy is improving, do you expect the compression is still viable in the future to match the accuracy requirements? Yeah, that's a good question. Uh, actually, it's not very, it's not not very easy to you know to, to claim clearly if, if we can uh, always uh, mm, we can always achieve the similar performance for the compressed model, and it also determines how to, how can you compress them. The, the, the new advanced new invented uh, method for example for the transformer how to compress them it, it all depends on this but uh, based on my experience uh, there can be some way uh, actually it is very difficult you know because um, I, to my feeling to my experience the, the compression work is uh, has some lag be, behind the behind the new New, uh, new invented method so that uh, uh, if you always compare with the newest one, you will find that the compressed model is a uh, is worse than the newest uh, uh, proposed method solution. But if you if you you know after some time, uh, for the same architecture, I think that it is probably that we can always uh, get a good performance. Uh, for the compressed model, but there is some. Uh, th it also depends on how many data you have, you know, because there is some optimization uh, on the. Maybe there are some. I, I I read some previous work that there is some optimization for the for the number of data and also on the on your uh, model capacity. So there can be some. Uh, if you don't have a sufficient data, may, maybe 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 compression. Compressing is uh, can be good or bad, can be better or worse. I'm not sure on this. Yeah, but I think they, they are. In my opinion, they, they, they are okay. Yeah. No problem. Thank you. Hmm. Okay. If no more questions, let's thank our speaker again for today's lecture. And uh, um, the video playback will be available on our YouTube channel after some editing work. We will post uh, relevant information um, like the models and uh, um, GitHub links uh, the speaker mentioned, and uh, also possibly the slides uh, themselves after the speaker Ching uh, makes some changes to the slides. 
so um, thank you so much for, for staying, Ching, and thank you for, uh, to all, all the audience who stay with us till the end. Um, thank you so much, and uh, please uh, stay tuned for our future events, upcoming events in February and March. Um, thank you so much. So um, I will close the meeting um, in a few seconds. Thanks. Thank you. Okay, bye everyone. Bye. See you next time.